Evening, love. Let us continue with the little prince. Chapter 22. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the railway switchman. What do you do out here, the little prince asked. I sort out travelers in bundles of a thousand, said the switchman. I send off the trains that carry them, to the right and now to the left. And a brilliantly lighted express train shook the, shook the switchman's cable as it rushed by with a roar like thunder. They are in a great hurry, said the little prince. What are they looking for? Not even a locomotive engineer knows that, said the switchman. And a second brilliantly littered, lighted express thundered by in the opposite direction. Are they coming back already, the man of the little prince? They're not the same ones, said the switchman. It is an exchange. Were they not satisfied with where they were, asked the little prince? No one is ever satisfied with this, where he is, said the switchman. And they heard the roaring thunder of a third brilliantly lighted express. Are they pursuing the first travelers, demanded the little prince. They're pursuing nothing at all, said the switchman. They're all asleep in there. And if they're not asleep, they are yawning. Only the children are flattening their noses against the window panes. Only the children know what they are looking for, said the little prince. They waste their time off a rag doll, and it becomes very important to them. If anybody takes away from them, they cry. They are lucky, said the switchman. Chapter 23 Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the merchant. This is a merchant who sold pills he had and invented to quench thirst. And you'd only swallow one pill a week, and you would feel no need to drink of anything else. Why are you selling those, asked the little prince. Because they save a tremendous amount of time, said the merchant. Computations have been made by experts. With these pills, you save 53 minutes in a week, every week. And what do you? What do I do with those 53 minutes? Anything you like. As for me, said the little prince to himself, if I had 53 minutes I'd like to spend, as I liked, I should walk at my leisure towards a spring of fresh water. Chapter 24 it was now the eighth day since I had my accident in the desert, and I had listened to the story of the merchant, and I was drinking the last drop of my water. Ah, said the little prince, these memories of yours are very charming. Ah, I said to the little prince, these memories of yours are very charming, but I have not yet succeeded in my repairing my plane. I have nothing more to drink, and I too should be very happy if I could walk at my leisure toward a fresh spring of water. My friend the fox, said the little prince to me, my dear little man, this is no longer a matter and has anything to do with the fox. Why not? Because I'm about to die of thirst. He did not follow my reasoning, and he answered me, It is a good thing to have a friend, even if one is about to die. I, for instance, am very glad to have a fox as a friend. He has no way of guessing the danger, I said to myself. He has never been either hungry or thirsty. A little sunshine is all he needs. But he looked at me steadily and replied to my thought, I am thirsty too. Let us look for a well. I made a gesture of weariness. It is absurd to look for a well at random in the immensity of the desert, but nevertheless, we started walking. When we had trudged along for several hours in silence, the darkness fell and the stars began to come out. Thirst had made me a little feverish, and I looked at them as if I was in a dream. The little prince's last words came reeling back to my memory. Then you are thirsty too, I demanded. He did not reply to my question. He merely said to me, Water may also be good for the heart. I did not understand this answer. I said nothing. I knew him very well. I knew very well that it was impossible to cross-examine him. He was tired, he sat down, I sat down beside him, and after a little silence he began to speak. The stars are beautiful because of, because of a flower that cannot be seen. I replied, yes, that is so, and without saying anything more, I looked across the ridges of sand that were stretched out before us in the moonlight. The desert is beautiful, the little prince added. And that was true, I have always loved the desert. One sits down in a desert, sand dune, sees nothing, hears nothing. Yet through the silence, something throbs and gleams. What makes the desert beautiful, said the little prince? Is it that somewhere it hides a well? I was astonished by the sudden understanding of the mysterious radiation of the sands. When I was a little boy, I lived in an old house, and legend told us that a treasure had been buried there. To be sure, no one had ever known where to find it. Perhaps no one had ever even looked for it. But it cast an enchantment over that house. My home was hiding as a secret in the depths of my heart. Yes, I said to the little prince, the house, the stars, the desert. What gives them their beauty is something that is invisible. I am glad, he said, that you agree with me. I'm glad that you agree with my fox. As the little prince dropped off to sleep, I took him in my arms and set out walking once more. I felt deeply moved and stirred. It seemed to me that I was carrying a very fragile treasure. It seemed to me even 
that there was nothing more fragile on all the earth. In the moonlight I looked at his pale forehead, his closed eyes, his locks of hair that trembled in the wind, and I said to myself, what I see here is nothing but a shell. What is most important is invisible. His lips opened slightly with suspicion of a half smile, and I said to myself again, what well, moves you so deeply about this little prince who is sleeping here is his loyalty to a flower, the image of a rose that shines through his whole being like a flame with a lamp, even when he is asleep. And I felt him be more fragile still. I felt the need of protecting him, as he himself were a flame that might be extinguished by a little puff of wind. And as I walked on so, I found the well at daybreak. And we'll continue with that tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to be home exceptionally soon. I've got my room preliminarily cleaned. I don't know if you can see it. Well, I'll give you another little live to it. I have uh, got my desktop going on here. A nice little bit of... Whoa, a sprite. A little background. The background is of two little people walking on a sand dune overlooking a mountain. Which I will... There we go. I like it. Let's flip. Got all the books. Got my. I'm getting ready for my exam tomorrow, so I've got all of this stuff. Um, that's my dins. And that's my milk. My milk. You milk. More notes. Lettuce on top of notes. Coats. Totes. Mm. Mm, goats. Uh, so, in the meantime, I hope your exam went really well today. You told me it did, but you haven't given me any more info yet. I think, by the sense of what you told me, it sounds like it went fantastically. And for tomorrow and the appointment, it will go just fine, Christy. And I'm curious as to what you plan on talking about. Um so feel free to send that. But it'll go fantastic, Christy. They're very kind, understanding people. It's totally personal with just you and them. It doesn't have to be anything more than that. And they understand that. They, they, they respect you, Christy. I do too, a lot. And I'm proud of you for doing this. All right, Christy. I love you. Sleep well. Keep camp, find a llama, carry in. And I will talk to you soon, soon. And I'll talk to you personally even sooner. All right, sweetheart. I love you, Christy. Trying in with the Zoom. That was the wrong way. What? Well, it's all digital. <laughs> well, I'm just going to hold this down one of these ways. Woo!